Tamam Mithat.
Samson. Kurt Samson. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. I'm glad to see you. What are you doing on this side of the river? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, this is Jason Scott. Glad to meet you, Mr. Scott. Any friend of Kurt's is a friend of mine. Hey, hey, it's pretty cold. Got anything to warm us up? Mitzah, bring something to drink for Mr. Johnson. That's my pup. His name is Mitzah. <laughs> I miss <laughs> Mr. Scott works in the mines like you. That's what we need. Good and strong. <laughs> Helps a lot to keep the cold out. <coughs> well, let's say he's a miner too, in a certain sense. <coughs> but he's now looking for gold. What he's trying to dig up, and he works hard at it, is the truth. I'm a writer. And a newspaper man. I travel around trying to find news to write about people, events, anything that proves interesting that they can use at the paper. You'll find a lot around here. The folks in town, they're crazy. Their main thought is only to find gold. They're all heading north to make a fortune up here in the Klondike. It's the one place that a good journalist would head for. That's why Jason is here. We hear there's a boat running up the river now the ice is melted. It's where they arrive, Dawson City. A bad place. Now, Charlie, just think of the money you're going to make by hunting. All those prospectors, they have to eat, too. We'll have to get out of here. The weather's changing. I warn you, Dawson City is full of corrupt people. I'd never set foot anywhere near there. No matter what the government says. Even though they can't carry arms any longer, I don't trust those people. Be good now. <laughs> something to make it good. I think we should have a slogan. You buy everything in Dawson City from Beauty Smith. Look at the state he's in. Now, oh, rap, rap. <laughs> Listen, you old bullseye. <laughs> you know why I let you play preacher in this town? Yeah, because you feel sorry for me, Beauty. <laughs> Sure, I feel sorry for you. But there's another reason. I don't want a real preacher underfoot, understand? Oh, you're right. You're right. Beware the curious hypocrite, saith Abraham. A real preacher would cause you a lot of trouble, and you're not a man who relishes trouble. You know all about these things. Oh, your breath stinks of alcohol when you preach to your parishioners. And one of these days, they're gonna kick you. Ass over tin cup right out of that mission. Oh, Beauty, if you don't want them to, they won't dare. No, but I will. And I'll do it first. If you want to keep on pocketing their offerings, you'll have to start being a model of virtue. The steamer's arrived. Yeah, the steamer's arrived. You better stay out of that saloon. Get right down there. On the wall, reaching you flock.
it. I accept, please forgive me. To hell with you and your excuses. Hold your horses there, friend. What are you in the fitting for? She didn't push you. I did. You weren't even near. Use your eyes, friend. Or go to a doctor. It was me. I did it. On purpose. Because I don't like you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Daisy. Yes, sister. Forgive my asking, sister. But why does someone like you come here? And what are you doing at Dawson City? Oh, what I do everywhere. My mission here is to heal the sick. That's courageous. Can I help you? Are you a doctor? Oh, no. I'm a reporter. Oh. My name is Scott. Jason Scott? Yes, Jason Scott. Where'd you hear my name? It's printed on your books. I've read your books. Hope you weren't shocked by some of my ideas. Oh, no, I wasn't shocked at all. You explain your position and you should. It's important these things be said. Hmm. Hey, Jason. Give me a hand. I'm coming. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, sister. Mr. Scott. Can you give me a hand, too? Yes, of course. But how? By telling everyone how, how, how these poor people live. I think that's shocking and disgraceful. You must speak to the world about them. Okay, I'll write about them. There's one other thing, though. You promise to remember me someday in your prayers. Daisy. Here's my brothers. Give and help Dawson City Charities. Give now, or you never know when you may need our help. That's it. Dawson City Charities need you. Thank you very much. Good day. Thank you very much, Jenny. A small donation for charity. A small donation for charity, I'm sure you can help out. Father Utley at your service. Oh, heaven sent you. It's a great pleasure to welcome a servant of the Lord. What brought you here? Oh, an idea, Father. A hope. I want to start a hospital. A hospital? But you need lots of equipment. Oh, I have almost everything I need. Medicine, instruments, and... And money, naturally. Yes. Praise be the Lord. I myself this very morning mentioned in my church how badly we needed a hospital here in Dawson City. Oh. And where were you thinking of constructing this blessed edifice system? Oh. I don't know. I was counting on getting the help of some generous soul. Say no more, sister. Say no more. Hey, you wastrels! Atone your sins! Handle the baggage of this holy stranger. Thank you. Thank you. Just follow me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Still here? Get away! Filthy wolf! Get away! That's enough! Beauty Smith is taking a rest this afternoon. Your hammering is disturbing him. Terribly sorry. A difference of opinion? Yes. The sign got on his nerves. <laughs> oh, mine too, Mr... Jason Scott of the New York Daily Tribune. A nosy journalist. Yeah. May I have the honor of knowing to whom I'm speaking? Mr. Smith. Beauty Smith. Ah, your reputation travels. Really? Well, sorry I woke you up. Don't mention it. Oh, Mr. Smith. What is it? Two dollars. For my sign. Dawson City, we'll find a doctor. And the doctor will cure Mitza, my brave little hunter, eh? No, 
Jason, that won't do. Take a few steps back. There, okay. Nine feet. Losing nine feet means giving up at least fifty thousand dollars. He's right! I don't put up with some inspector robbing me, understand? Yeah, that's right, Andy. That's right, Andy. Nobody's robbing. The law says nobody can stake off more than 500 feet. Go tell that to beauty. And watch out that his dog don't bite your tail off. <laughs> the beauty Smith doesn't make the law here. It's the government does it. What government? Government here is Mr. Smith. You better do what he says, mister. Hey. What? Right. Just suppose... Suppose I defied him. You're not a minor. Well, let's just say I am. Well, it would be just too bad, see? Because no one would buy a single ounce of your gold. <laughs> and suppose that I want to buy your gold. It's all Mr. Smith's. We have a contract with Mr. Smith, see? Oh. A contract? Yeah. We sell him all the gold we find. All? Yeah, all. And he pays well. In cash? Sure. Ten percent. And the rest in promissory notes. Each year, it earns good interest. Excuse me. I don't have any more time to waste. Come on. Let's get to work. Well, what do you think? Hmm. I've been working up here for 12 years. I've seen very few come out rich. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, whatever can you be doing? Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, pray tell me what you have done. You take me by the hand and kiss me. You thrill me, you chill me. My heart is really badly in me. Oh, I don't know why. Do you know why? I'll tell you. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, whatever can you be doing? to the source. Be my guest. Thank you. No, 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 behave yourself. No, 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 no. Girls, the gentlemen over here want a little company. Come on. A 
sight for sore eyes. Beauty doesn't want you coming here. This is no place for a respectable pastor. But I have to see you sometimes. You never come to the mission. Ah, oh, please. That's no place for me. That's not true. You're a good girl. I know. But my reputation's... You're the outcast, and I'm the saint. Isn't this funny? You're no saint, but you're the best father I've ever seen. You have to go. You spoke to the miners yourself. Perhaps someone told you I forced them to sign a contract. No one. <laughs> you amuse me. You come here, tell me you've nosed your way into my affairs. And now when you found everything's above board, you should be apologizing to me. But no, you have the cold-blooded nerve to ask me where the catch is. I'm not that stupid. I just want to warn you that I'll soon find out for myself. There's nothing to find out, Mr. Scott. Won't you have a cigar? An offer from a gentleman. A gentleman? But you grab up all the gold you can buy by paying for 90% of it with little scraps of paper. Those little slips of paper will be worth a lot more a year from now. Huh. And how much more is the price of all the junk you sell? How should I know? You set the prices. Half the rotten merchandise that's bought in Dawson City comes through you. It's a monopoly. You know that, too. Yes, that, too. And there's not much that's very good quality. Except the vintage champagne. My private stock. It's drinkable. Then you drink it. Would you like a drink? Why should I have it with you? Well... Because we could be friends. That's what you think. Mm. I guess I can think up a better reason. What? I'm a friend of your father's. What do you mean by that? But don't be afraid. It's just a little blackmail to talk to you a bit. I heard everything. But I won't tell anyone your secret. Even if you curse me out now. Maybe I'll surprise you. I like you. At least I think so. Maybe I'll try that drink you mentioned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go.
You're all right. All right. Right in. We're okay now, Fang. He came back. Good boy. Is that your canoe? Yes. You didn't bring any furs. How come? It's not a selling trip. He's very sick. Oh. Sorry. You didn't bring any of them. I've got the furs downriver. I want a doctor. Listen to you. I'll find you a doctor. And you bring me furs. Agreed. That's all right. I'll do it. He's a strong, healthy boy. You'll see, he'll be all right now. I'm sorry. We can't keep the dog here. He won't bother anyone. He's missing I'm friends. I'm sorry. White Fang isn't allowed. You can't stay here. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Be a good boy. Come on. Quiet down, Frank. Oh, come on, Frank. Oh, my God. 
Is that your dog, Injun? Yes, it is, sir. It has just killed the best dog in Dawson. White Fang can kill ten like that. He's strong, you know, very courageous. How much do you want for it? Enough for sale, sir. I asked you how much you want. And I gave you my answer. One hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. I don't want to sell them. Not even three hundred dollars. No, sir. You don't want my money. That's your loss. I want your dog. No, stop! shouldn't have come to Dawson City. His son is very sick. Then the prophet Ezekiel cried, Are you not ashamed of this abomination? Who do you think you are because your skin is white? Don't you know that God created all races of all colors? There is no difference between you and a Klondike Indian. 
even if you and your total ignorance of such things don't even know where the Klondike is. And now, I will repeat Ezekiel's warning. Anyone who kills someone of another race is no better than Cain, who murdered his brother Abel. And now he roasts in the eternal fires of Gehenna. And so all of you sinners have been warned. Take care, you too will roast in that place for all eternity. Another whiskey, Joe. Hmm. Bring the bottle. It's on the Reverend. <laughs> I must say I like that passage from Ezekiel. Thanks. The man who disposes of a member of a different race is as bad as Cain, huh? Uh, so you heard my sermon. Oh, yes. Didn't you see me there? No. I also remember the words of Isaiah. That man there who is a witness to a crime and who doesn't say it will be condemned to burn in the fires of hell forever. Uh, young man, Isaiah was very fortunate not to have to live in these times. These times are unlucky if you don't keep your mouth shut. But then, a preacher shouldn't talk like that. You have to set an example for the others. And if somebody saw you there, and said so. What about that? Wouldn't your conscience bother you? You preach all about divine justice, but you seem to forget there's human justice too. You know exactly who killed the Indian, but you're scared to say so. Scared? No, terrified. I'm shaken with fear, my friend, and I have a right to be. In this town, even the walls have ears. I confess I'm so remorseful I can't sleep, but I also confess I'm trying to avoid the burning fire as long as I can. You have the courage to denounce the killer? Of course, if I have the proof. But only if I don't get into trouble do I give it to you. Wait and see. And trust me. Come with me. I have something that will speak for both of us. Hmm. Everything is all set up. Does the book of Isaiah not say somewhere? He who champions justice runs the risk of being betrayed by the man he seeks to protect. is your knife, isn't it? That never even belonged to me. It has your initials on it. It doesn't prove that the thing is mine. Lots of men have the same initials. Donald Crater, Doc Crocker, and Kavansky. Well, bring in Carter, Crocker, and Kavansky, hmm? 
What for? It's true. The knife could belong to any one of them. And that's why I've convinced them to tell us everything they know. Which will keep them out of trouble. You say it was us, eh, Chester? Circus, the meanest, most savage beast you've ever seen. A wolf against a wild bear. Yeah. It's an idea, and the betting will bring in a lot of money. Uh -huh. Naturally, the odds will be in our favor. Ladies and gentlemen, this way, please. Come along. You'll see the biggest show of your life. Come along, ladies and gentlemen. Come along. Folks, come on, come on, a sensational match. Come on, gentlemen, you can't miss this show this way. The biggest show on earth. Hurry, hurry, hurry. One and all, the show is about to begin. We left the word out that the bear will be muzzled. <laughs> they swallowed it? Yeah. They all put their money on the dog. That's pretty funny. Take any bet that they need, make. Citizens of Dorson City, first city of the North, capital of the Klondike, I have the honor of introducing the fight of the century! <laughs> On my left, the fiercest warrior of his kind, the Fighting Wolf! <laughs> Who today, for the first time in the history of the world, pits his strength against the terror of the forest, the wild bear! Place your last bets, friends. Before the fight begins, you know who to put your money on. Key. 
What key? To where the alcohol's kept, please. I've been looking for it all morning. <laughs> Sister Evangelina! Sister Evangelina! What's happening? Oh, come see what's happening. Hurry. I'm coming. Hurry, please. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Why, thank. Why, thank. you had to start it. I bought that dog. Yes, Mr. Smith. With a human life. Want to pet him now? Come on. Here, put this on. That's it. Go on. Will he die? No. He'll be all right. Now you go to sleep. You promised. Krista. Come on. Why did White Fang come back without my father? I don't know. We'll ask him when he gets back. With these wounds, a man would be dead. The steel he's made of, he'll pull through. He'll need a new master. Mitsa's his master. And Mitsa will need a father. At his age, a mother is more important. He's here now. I'll look after Mitsa. That's it, Mitsa. Come on. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're tired, huh? A little bit. Come on, climb in. All right, set. Hey, over here. 
rest of the way. Ooh, well done. <laughs> Good See? boy. Yeah, See, right. you're all right now. Good boy. Been at the dam, the work's almost finished. Yes. And the miners are convinced. The dam will work miracles for them. The mine's dried up. There's no use trying. Oh, I heard in the saloon that there's some travelers prospecting on the other side of the mountain. Yes. I'll go take a look. Before there's a bunch of wild rumors spreading here. Well, that means you're leaving. No, it's just for a few days. Well, now, you go with Sister Evangelina. You must rest. Mm -mm. What do you mean? A future Indian chief must learn to obey if one day he wants to command. Look at White Fang. Go to bed, Fang. There, you see? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've got to go. How many times have I asked you to knock? <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. I'll have the door removed, and that'll solve the problem. There's another one you have to solve. You're not my type. That particular problem doesn't exist. I do the choosing. <clears throat> Do you want to see me, Beauty? Later. No, no, tell me now. I have no secrets from Krista. Get out of my sight. Is that clear? No. It's not clear at all. As you wish. It concerns her, anyway. I don't want her to set foot in that mission again. I don't like her friendship with that nun. Are you sure that's really what's bothering you? My daughter won't ever set foot in here again. <laughs> here and hit me. Pardon me? Sock me and get out of here.
Mitsu, what's wrong? I think he smells danger and he's What is it, White Fang? You're here. Nothing's going to happen to her. Too. He's just restless. Where's he going? White Fang! What are you doing? Get down. Down. Get back here. Addressed to Kurt Jansen. You know that mine inspector has been around. Before I deliver it, you're not going to deliver it. Just as you say, Beauty.
I don't have to tell you. No, no, I won't say anything about it, Beauty. New gold thing. Don't strain yourself. A new gold vein has been discovered in Alaska, a place called Nome on the west coast. You know what that means? Mm. The end of Dawson. Exactly. You're right, my dear friend. When the news gets around, this city's gonna turn into a ghost town. We'll have to see that it doesn't get around. Huh? Yes. It's possible. Until the boat arrives. Oh, yeah. The news is going to come in on the boat. We can't count on much time. What then? I confess I won't be sorry to leave Dawson. Managed to get everything there is to get here. I want you to make all the arrangements. There's no time to lose, Hall. Wait! I do not intend to go without getting the one object that interests me the most. But don't you think that she'll object? Then you better call on her. I've already told Beauty I don't want to work for him anymore. He can get himself another singer. I've lost my voice. Don't be a fool. If he wants to see you, he's got a reason. There is no good reason for me to see him. I suppose only is what it's about. What's my father have to do with it? Huh? Ask Beauty. I'm going out for a minute, sister. My respect, sister. Rita? Go find Father Oatley. Tell him to come here right away. Yes, sister. It's warm and sunny in California. After all this snow, my proposal should make you happy. All of your proposals have one thing in common. None of them make me happy. Don't talk like a fool with me. Listen. I've never been so obliging to a woman in my life. I've been the winner. I've never begged. I haven't noticed you begging. No. But I... I might. Don't humiliate yourself. It won't get you anywhere. Goodbye, Mr. Beauty. What is this? Well, since you make it so obvious, the begging won't help. the dramatics, Krista. Get up, do you hear me a little? God. Oh. We gotta get her to the mission. To that nerve. Oh, well, we can't, Beauty. You shouldn't have shown her the telegram. She knows gold was discovered in Nome. Where it's sunk. The only thing is, she won't talk. Because she's dead. 
dead? Krista. Krista, my little girl. That's why you killed her. So she wouldn't talk. That's why. She won't sing anymore because she's dead. They killed her. They killed her. And you know why? They didn't want anyone to know gold was discovered today in Nome. Gold! They killed her because she knew. what Mr. Smith said. He always told us these notes were as good as cash. These aren't payable for one year. You're not supposed to cash it for a year. I can't wait for a year. I'm going. I'll take the first boat. We're all leaving, Harry. Father Oakley says there's gold in no. Come on. Give us our money. Let's come on. Come on. Come on. I want the truth. Some say it was an accident. Some others say Father Oli is right. It was Beauty's fault. I'm told Krista was Father Oli's daughter. Yes, that's right. She was. dies. Silence! Silence! Listen to me. Listen, please. Get out of my way, sister. It's no place for a girl. You're right, Tom. You're right. But listen to me. Like you, I've traveled a long way to come here. You were looking for something, for gold. But now you find you're penniless, because only a few of you really found gold. 
And most of those whose gold it was were framed by, by a criminal. Yes, that's right. You this man who purposely robbed you. But no one can give you the right to kill him without a proper and fair trial. <laughs> Gun beauty. You can't get away. Scott, I'm not kidding. Send them back. He's just crazy enough to do anything. You know how much water would descend? 
I've got to stop him. Jason, you mustn't. If you value your life, Scott, I'd stay there. See the dog, and we found you. I'll stay here with Mr. Kurt. I want to wait for White Fang. Mitch, I told you what happened. Fang was drowned. He won't come back. Jason's going to take you back to your tribe. And you'll find you'll make friends with many other nice boys. White Fang is not dead. So long, Kurt. Goodbye, Jason. Come on. An Indian chief never cries. Goodbye. Good luck. Thank you. So long, Kurt. Good luck. We'll meet soon again.
of prospectors alike. Gold's all they think about. Somebody strikes gold, the Lord knows where, and they all run like madmen. I wrote to my order. Let him know. We'll need a hospital. Yes. No. Yeah. 